In 2012, many people of goodwill across the U.S. have stood up to oppose the unjust HHS mandate concerning the coercion of faithful followers of Christ to disobey their conscience. In Lincoln, Nebraska, on October 7th, we the people stood together to voice our protest. We gather here today because this is not just one issue among many. Religious liberty is fundamental to a free society, a just society, or as President Adams may have put it, it is fundamental to the success of our Constitution made only for a moral and religious people. We have a very difficult task ahead of us to try to change the direction of our country to return to what its founding fathers gave us initially, freedom. The First Amendment, the first part of the First Amendment, the first of all our rights is that freedom of religion. Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or restricting the free practice thereof. But the Health and Human Services mandate implemented this past February is the most far-reaching encroachment on religious freedom in American history. This is just not a Catholic issue. This is a religious freedom issue. If Caesar asks for what is justly due to God, will we comply? that the health care industry needs reforming to make sure that no one is denied medical care. God's people have been on the front lines for centuries helping the sick and dying. May I submit to you that few, if any, have done more to care for the poor and the sick than the Church of Jesus Christ. The Catholic Church teaches in its Declaration of Religious Liberty from the Second Vatican Council that, quote, all men are to be immune from coercion on the part of individuals or of social groups or of any human power in such wise that no one, no one, is to be forced to act in a manner contrary to his own beliefs, whether privately or publicly, whether alone or in association with others within due limits. No one. Our faith is not a private faith. It is a call to evangelize the entire world and all parts thereof. There is the effort that we're seeing with the present government is to privatize faith and keep us behind the walls of our churches and keep us shut up. Let me be clear then that the church recognizes the role of the state in regulating for the common good. But the church rejects the notion that the state can decide for us when and how our activity is motivated by faith. The church rejects the idea that religious activity ought to be defined by bureaucratic fiat. The church wants to remind many Americans of our American tradition, which rejects the notion that somehow the state should have the power to limit our religious activity without due cause. After all, what danger do we pose to the common good as we serve the poor and the ailing in our communities across the United States? What harm do we do to the common good when we live robust lives as Christians in the public square? What is wrong with believing that we, when we feed the hungry or clothe the naked or educate the child, that we do so in answer to God who said that when we do this for the least of these, we do it to him? Our theology teaches us that when we care for the aged and the dying, for the desperately poor and the just plain desperate, we are participating in Christ's activity. Does the government not understand that under the HHS mandate, not even Jesus' ministry would have counted as religious activity? What must we do as Christian Americans to serve God in our present circumstance? continue to 
fight against this threat, against our religious freedom in the HHS mandate. The speakers today have covered what you need to know. The seriousness of the threat is real and imminent. Pray for a movement of repentant, humble prayer. Vote, be informed, and vote your values. And finally, engage. Tell your friends, family, anyone who will listen. We are living in a day that requires our civic courage. No matter the cost, we should consider it an honor to stand for biblical principles. We have been great pew dwellers. We have been great bleacher dwellers. And we're experts from the pews, and we're experts in the bleachers. But you know what? We don't do an awful lot when we are captive of the bleachers and the pews. We are living in a time when in our different faiths, there is a call for new prophets and new witnesses in our midst, transforming our culture. Like every Christian, I struggle to live up to the God I believe in. And I'm sure that like all Christians, I could do more. So let's do more. Let's show our nation how our faith permeates every aspect of our lives. Let's do more to prove what Pope Benedict XVI has taught, which is that to love in truth, who is Christ Jesus, is to love with an unparalleled power that no mere program or good sentiment can stimulate or replace. I encourage every Christian to love as Jesus loved. Be truly Christian in all things, and the world will have no choice to respect our freedom. When we consider this attack against our religious liberties, our religious freedom, we're tempted to ask this administration, who do you think you are? But I would end with a question that was put to all of us by a recent author, writer in, the, in Crisis Magazine, who asks, who are we? He says, who are we? As we clamor for our right to religious freedom, perhaps we should look to ourselves when we question our threatened exile to the desert beyond the public square. Are we a people who have placed our trust in God, or have we gone our own way? Have we used the freedom God gave us to obey his commandments, or have we pursued false gods and their false goals? Have we trusted the church as the incarnation of Jesus in this world, or have we decided that the church was in error, setting ourselves up as the ultimate arbiters of the truth? Have we forgotten who we are, giving strength to our enemies while weakening ourselves? We now find ourselves attacked on the very grounds we chose not to defend. We should not be surprised to find ourselves flanked on a moral position we ourselves tepidly taught, marginally believed, and seldom lived. Our challengers can be forgiven for thinking they were moving into an empty house. We are not victims of a crisis inflicted by others, but in a quandary of our own making. We are a people who did not trust in the love of God. Today we face a threat to a religious freedom to teach and to live what the church teaches, a freedom we chose not to exercise because we did not trust a God who teaches us how to love. Maybe it is time to go out into the desert to remember who we are. What, what, what's your thoughts about today, Michael? Uh, you know, we just got to stand up for life. Period. Amen. Thank you.